agenda stands on the foundation of creating sustainable capacities and viable opportunities for the empowerment of people at the bottom of the socioeconomic pyramid. A unique feature of the bottom-up agenda, therefore, is that each pillar of our economic transformation is deeply embedded in commitments arising from Article 43 of the Constitution, which sets our economic and social rights as fundamental human rights. Through our universal health coverage pillar, we are discharging our constitutional mandate to actualize every Kenyan's right to the highest attainable standard of health and to healthcare services. Similarly, the right to accessible and adequate housing, as well as reasonable standards of sanitation, are being realized through the affordable housing pillar of the plan for the bottom-up transformation. Additionally, our agro-industrial and food security pillar attends to the right of every Kenyan to be free from hunger and to have adequate food of acceptable standards. The right to clean, safe water is catered for through the irrigation and the water harvesting components of our agro-industry and food security, as well as the cross-cutting enablers of our plan. The right to social security, as already observed, forms the bedrock of the strategy and the foundation of our governing agenda. As, as such, it permeates every pillar and therefore affects interventions across sectors. The right to education must be observed robustly as a basic indicator of commitment to enhancing inclusion, effective participation, productivity of citizens, and transforming national competitiveness. This event, therefore, is important to all of us. I am delighted with the progress we are making in focusing transformational att attention to the social sector, which is the backbone of sustainable social development. The paramount question to be answered in the course of deliberations during this conference arises from its theme. Number one, first, what are we doing to accelerate the development of an inclusive and integrated social protection system in our country? Secondly, what are our strategic options for the expansion of coverage and improvement of shock responsiveness in order to leave no one behind? These are the foremost considerations in promoting and advocating for an integrated social protection system that can achieve increased coverage throughout the effective coordination of diverse actors in order to focus our full capacity on the people. Our philosophy of development is people-centered. We must empower the people to effectively actualize their potential by taking full advantage of economic opportunities and to have capacity to optimally benefit from development. We are confident as a nation and as government that we can simultaneously pursue rapid economic transformation and social protection at the same time and that ultimately we shall achieve both of them. Social protection waits cannot, social protection cannot wait until 2030 when we will have achieved our economic vision. If it does, the development achieved at the expense of or in exclusion of social protection will be hollow and fragile. We must undertake both commitments simultaneously because the standard of social protection is a good measure of sustainability and the promise of shared prosperity. The other urgent reason 
is that at the moment, too many people cannot afford a decent living. They are vulnerable, marginalized, and at the risk of being left behind. 16% of Kenyans today live below the poverty line. The number of people living in extreme poverty peaked during the COVID pandemic, reaching 8.9 million people. 26% of Kenyan children are under the age of five are stunted. Undernutrition is depriving them of normal growth, development, and is robbing them of their full potential. Older citizens, orphans, and vulnerable children, as well as people living with extreme disability, have a right to receive support now, and it is grossly unjust to wait even for a moment, for whatever reason. And that is why Cabinet has now approved that from June 1, the social protection cash transfer money will be disbursed before salaries of public servants is disbursed. I know for a very long time we've had social protection cash transfer money disbursed three, four, five, six, maybe sometimes seven months after they are due. The instructions I have given and cabinet have undertaken and the Ministry of uh, the uh, Treasury have undertaken is that from June 1, before salaries of public servants is paid, cash transfer for the vulnerable will be paid. I think it is the moral thing to do, it is the right thing to do, because if we don't look after our vulnerable, we will be a society that will be judged very harshly. It is the reason why government is implementing various strategies to extend the safety net as far as possible. The reviewed national social protection policy therefore provides a framework to coordinate interventions across the country that are being undertaken by a broad coalition of actors from various sectors. County governments, the private sector, multilateral organizations including UNICEF and the World Bank are among the government's cherished partners and collaborators in the social protection agenda. Consequently, the government established a dedicated Department of Social Protection and Citizen Affairs. The participation of multi, multiple partners in, is highly welcome and appreciated due to the limited coverage of social protection interventions under such programs as social assistance, social security,